Aloha. You're watching F5 On Demand. I'm Technical Marketing Manager Peter Silva. We're here in Orlando, Florida for the Microsoft Exchange Conference 2012. We're here in booth 15, last day of the show, so if you're here, come on by. And we have Dane Miller with us. He's a product management, senior product management engineer with F5. So all week we've been bragging, running our mouths about how great the iApp is and how easy it is to deploy Microsoft Exchange with the big IP with the F5 iApp and just thought it would be excellent to see exactly how easy it is. So, we got a big IP up on the screen over here, so why don't we come on over this way and Dane's going to show us just exactly, let me move this out the way, how easy it is. So, we're on a uh, big IP 11.2, right Dane? That's correct. And um, uh, iApp templates are a new feature with the 11.0 product line. Um, and we basically have encapsulated all of our application knowledge right into the iApp template. So with very little effort, an administrator can set up um, a big IP to do whatever they want. And we're going to do it for Exchange right now. It's uh, typically a very complex deployment, but we boiled it down to just a few questions. Uh, what I did here is I uh, selected um, the Exchange template from a list of all templates available on the box. And then we're presented with a series of uh, instructions, prerequisites, and whatnot. Um, uh, once you've run through these once or twice, you can actually more or less ignore the text. There's very few decisions you actually have to make here, though. Um, one of the first is what role Big IP is actually going to be playing. Uh, in this particular case, we're going to use local traffic manager to load balance and optimize the, uh, the client access traffic, but we can participate as part of uh, APM, which is our pre-authentication solution as well. Um, and that's only a couple of extra steps, but today we're just going to do basic load balancing. Yep. Uh, we are going to elect not to use APM in this particular instance. Uh, we are going to indicate that incoming traffic from clients is encrypted. That's going to be almost always the case, but we want to give users the option. Um, I'm going to choose a certificate and key to use for the encryption from a list of uh, certificates and keys that are already imported onto the box. We are going to uh, keep that traffic um, in clear text when placed back on the wire um, so that we're offloading that resource, uh, the SSL processing from the uh, client access servers themselves. Most of our clients are coming into the WAN uh, rather than the LAN. This affects TCP and HTTP optimizations. Um, and let's see, we're going to have a pretty simple uh, architecture here. The, we're using the same subnet for big IP virtual servers and client access servers. We do have the option to indicate a routed configuration as well. Um, we are going to uh, indicate that we have more than 6,000 users. And that gives us the ability to set up a SNAT pool rather than a single SNAT server or si single SNAT IP address. And I'm just going to enter some fake addresses here. And... Second. Um, now we're going to indicate in this particular case that we're going to use a single IP address for all exchange services. We do have the option to separate those out. So for instance, you could have Auto Discover and Outlook Web App and Outlook Anywhere all handled by different IP addresses with different fully qualified domain names. Uh, but for our example, let's just keep it with a single address. We also have the option to uh, split traffic according to service. Um, so we could send, again, uh, all Outlook web app traffic to a particular set of client access servers, all auto-discover traffic elsewhere, all active sync traffic somewhere else. In this particular case, again, we're going to just use the same pool for everything. Um, now, we allow a great deal of optimization, but we really suggest that people don't um, uh, try to customize things too much. We've pre-selected most ideal settings uh, for most environments. So if you do really want to tweak things under the hood, you can choose to customize the pool settings, but we're just going to use F5 recommended settings, which makes our deployment a lot easier. Yep. Um, let's see, we just need an IP address uh, that's externally available to use for the virtual server. And then we just choose our services that we're deploying. And in our case, we're going to choose to deploy Outlook Web App, choose to deploy Outlook Anywhere, choose to deploy ActiveSync, choose to deploy AutoScover. Because this is a public-facing uh, virtual server, we're going to elect not to um, use uh, RPC Client Access, or MAPI, and that role has actually gone away in Exchange 2013. Uh, we're pointing out a 2010 server here. And then we add a couple of addresses for our actual client access servers.
Now these IAP templates in, in version nine and even version 10, we had the uh, application deployment guide, we had the deployment guides and a lot of this IAP template is kind of taking those deployment guides and really building them into the big IP rather than following along on paper, everything's now automatically built into Absolutely. the big IP. We found that you know, having people um, read, a or expecting them to read a 54 page document, or in the case of Exchange, I think we got up to 120 pages at one point in time, and people were missing a lot of details, so we just sure. incorporated all of that logic um, into the template itself. So let's see, I've added the, um, the IP addresses here. We're going to, uh, for our example, we're going to use simple monitors. If we chose to use advanced monitors, we would need to provide authentication credentials because we actually do a full synthetic logon into mailboxes to make sure that servers are up. Uh, in our particular case today, we're just going to use simple monitors, which is uh, basic ICMP ping responses, TCP sockets, and simple HTTP gets. Um, and then we just have to provide the name of the service. And then there's a few indications here about um, external things you might have to do, such as adjust your DNS and whatnot. Uh, nothing to do with Big IP per se, but your, uh, your deployment won't be complete until those are done. And then we hit finished, and we're presented with a list. Oops, I forgot to name it, the simplest <laughs> things, right? <laughs> Well, that's the other thing I've noticed over the years. We've really gotten much better within the big IP of, of, of alerting the administrator in various areas where they might have you know, forgotten a name or might have misconfigured something or even just missed a checkbox to then make sure that as they go through, they actually have a complete configuration rather than worrying about troubleshooting. Oh no, what did I miss? Exactly, we, um, we don't let people uh, complete a configuration that has uh, missing items, yeah. we basically. So we'll just scroll all the way back down to the bottom hit finished, and if I've done everything correctly, we should get a complete list of every object that was created as part of this template. And you can see there's uh, quite a long list here, um, and most of those are fairly detailed, especially the I rules that are created um, for persistence, uh, some of the optimization profiles and whatnot. But users don't have to do any of this by hand. Uh, by, if you were to try to do it by hand, it would take you hours, and that's assuming you got everything correct and didn't miss anything. Um, now we have, we just saw in less than five minutes, we have a fully configured system. Right, I was going to ask you in the, in the olden days how long it would have taken and how much time this, I mean, it were, yeah, from maybe hour, days, hours, down to minutes, if literally. For the first time, it could very easily be days. Yeah. So, and, and that's, so we're, we're pretty much set here. And so if you then, you know, those who are familiar with Big IP, if you go to local traffic, and you might not have had any virtual servers um, uh, configured yet, the iApp will then build all of that for you. Yeah, it's built everything. Um, and so, you know, you can see I have uh, pools now, um, for each of the services, I have the various I rules that we created to um, allow various things and optimize the traffic. Uh, we have the monitors that were created, and all of this was done absolutely automatically for you by just filling in that old template. And one of the things we did earlier, so we, when we logged on this machine, um, it had an earlier version of an Exchange iApp on there, and customers are now able to import iApps to add to their configuration and, and quickly, just real quickly, show us how, how we did that. So you go to downloads.f5.com. Yeah, go to downloads.f5.com. We'll actually back up here. Um, you just select um, the version of Big IP that you want to download for and you're given um, a package that you download. Um, you unzip that and all of the templates are just in there. When you want to actually load a new IAP template, you go back into the IAP menu, click templates and choose to import. Find the file. You find the file. This is an example. These are the files that I unzipped from that download. I chose the client access, the most recent one we had in the bundle. Yep. Uh, chose to import it. I'll show you that again. Um, in this case, because I already have one on the box, and I'm going to choose override existing templates. Uh, normally, you wouldn't have to do that. Right. And just choose upload, and once it's complete, it's presented in a list of available templates to choose from. Excellent stuff, Dane. Wow. So making Exchange deployed in minutes, not days, minutes, not, not hours. Days. Exactly. <laughs> in five minutes or less. Exactly. <laughs> Excellent. So there you have it. Oh, come on back in. Right. Come back in frame, Dane. So how easy it is to deploy Microsoft Exchange with the Big IP iApp on a Big IP Nothing device. Nothing to it. Yep. Thanks for joining us, Dane. Great no stuff.
And so for Dane, I got Janine behind the lens. Thanks, Janine. I'm Peter, and we're with F5 Networks from the Microsoft Exchange Conference 2012. Thanks for watching.